well I've done all my washing inside my curtains look great they really needed a wash but my lee cloth oh my goodness it is so moldy um, where my big bottom <laughs> sits so that's got to be re uh, washed but now I'm on the outside and oh my goodness these ropes are just ridiculous um, we just leave them and of course they just get dirty and as for the green mold no it's not green mold it's green slime um it's just everywhere well um the ones we can take off uh we're going to wash whereas the reefing lines obviously we've got to do those on the boat themselves and um i'm going to treat myself to a new backstay uh rope so um i'm really looking forward to that so what's happening beverly right so what i'm doing today is we are removing these genoa car lines because they're absolutely minging after the winter they've gone all green um but what we do is we attach a piece of string with some tape to the end and we put it through the pulleys because getting those apart to put the lines back through is a pain it's much easier when we've watched the line to reattach the string that we've got through the pulley and pull the line back through the pulley and that way it's the easiest way to do it so it has to go around down through that pulley and I have to do another bit of line then back through this pulley and I'll do another bit of line so I'm going to wind up with all sorts of bits of string in here but it's only temporary when we get the line back from having getting it washed we'll just tie them all on again and just pull them all through one at a time and the job will be done machine so uh, and to do that I just um, it's as if you're when you're knitting uh, casting on so and it just uh, reduces um, the amount of line you have so yeah that's what I'm doing but this was one of the sheets So there you go, another sheet done. Well, the weather's not great today. Um, it's blowing a bit, so I can't get on with the uh, <laughs> the sail. No, so we're looking at passage plans. Hey, I love passage planning. I know, it's I know, so exciting. I know a lot of people go on about, oh, electronic charts, that's all you need these days. But you know what? There's nothing quite like having a decent chart about the place. I, I love having a chart in front of me that I, I can just look down and see all the bits and bobs and we can sit around a chart and discuss things. I, I, I love having a chart. Yeah, but, um, you know, uh, what our initial plans are, because we're not... We're just thinking initially uh, yeah. as to what we want to do. No. If you're a long time viewer of the channel, you'll know we've been up and down this coastline a number of times and you're probably looking at us and saying, what in the name of Ned are they planning that? They've done this coastline so often they can probably do it with their eyes closed and the boat probably has a groove in the water. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, but the thing about it is we want to do something slightly different this time. We have been talking to locals and we've driven up and down the peninsula and had a look um, from the land toward the sea and we've identified one or two spots that we've gone past that we think we can actually anchor in. Exactly. It's one of them is actually marked as an anchorage. No. Yes, it is in the REC pilot, but it's one of the few. There are others marked as anchorages on the charts. Exactly. So um, when you're on Navionics, really zoom in to the coastline. Yeah. Um, this isn't Navionics. No, I know it's not Navionics. But if you zoom in, there's a little anchor just... Sorry, Prudence. If you zoom in, there's a little anchor just there. And... I know somebody who moored there and he seemed to be all right. If the wind is in from the north, I think that would be a good spot to move. But the nice thing about it is it's six or seven hours down, which is a tide. Exactly. So it means that you're not going to go any foul tide. Uh, but also uh, we're looking at about how the tides work. Mm -hmm. So for this area, um, once it goes to low tide, 
the tide then goes south. So yes. we're going to be looking at low tides. And when is that going to happen? In a sensible light. One of the nice things about having something like reeds, I mean, with most of the things you get online, um, you can't really see that far ahead in terms of tides. You can only do like a week ahead, really. Unless maybe, you do... maybe, maybe you have some of the paired things that's different. But on here, I can look right up to the end of the year. But I've got April. And low water at the start of April is at half past eight in the morning. Hmm. So that's good. Sorry, sorry. And my mistake. High water is at half past eight in the morning. Low water is at three in the afternoon. Right. OK. OK. Now, sunset at this time of year. It's around about seven, half seven at night. Mm. So that only gives you like three or four hours, which is not a lot. It would be much nicer to have the low tide in the morning. Yeah. Now, low tide in the morning will be, um, let's see, sunrise about a week later. About a week later, low tide is at seven o'clock in the morning. Now, one of the things that we might do, it will all depend on the wind directions. Um, because one of the things we want to do um, this chart doesn't really show it very well, but Ballyhome Bay here is lovely and protected from the south. Once our marina contract goes bing, we can go around the corner and sit in Ballyhome Bay for a couple of days if the wind is from the south. Um, last year we went south with a southerly wind and we had to motor. We motored all the way down to Scaries, mm. and it's a heck of a distance. I don't really want to do that. I want to sail as much as possible. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you've got to sort of like start looking at these things. But last year we weren't anchoring in Ballyhome Bay. No. But um, now we are because we have found it to be good. So with the southerly wind, I would go around there and sit and wait for the weather. Mm. Um, also, Beverly's mum wants us to go over to Carrick. <laughs> So that's got to be squeezed in. But what critical jobs have we got to do before we get anywhere near going off? Well, there's the seal. Yes, that is uh, currently on our... Uh, it's currently on the side deck. On the side deck. Not a great place for it to be. We also need to service the anchor. Um, basically, uh, the plate underneath the anchor is wobbly and we need to replace... Um, it's just 20 years old, it's worn out. Uh, the plate underneath it, we just also, with peat wood. We, really. also, we also like to take the anchor out, put it on the uh, pontoon, inspect it for wells or damage, things like that. We like to look at the chain for any weeks that are, any links that are failing. And sometimes we swap the chain round. So the end that's on the anchor we put in, in the locker and the end that's in the locker we put on the anchor. That means we have to move all the chain markers. Mm. But, you know, it's not a big job to do. We just rotate. And if there's any of the galvanisings come off, we've got cold galvanising spray. Psst, job fixed. Obviously, we've got to service the engine. Um, engine needs done, so that's another little job. And, as I said, I have did want to have a proper door. Well, that has been shelved. Yeah, we wanted to fit saloon doors to it, but we just ran out of time. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to just... Our perspex is cracking down the middle. It's not good. We're just going to make washboards. It will do us for the season. Mm. When we come back here in October, we will start the door project first. Yes. But the thing is, you know, you've got projects that you want to do and projects that have to be done. And um, That's a want to do. The engines are have to do. Yeah, the engines have to do. The Having a, a, a saloon door is a want to do. So that's just been shelved. But mm. I do need washboards. Because what if that... Pl glass fails if it spills it'll split down the middle and then you'll be gluing it together with duct tape and that's no way to go that's not that's not really an option so that has to be done so um yeah we've got lots to do and um but like i say planning another thing we could do is maybe going to strangford just depends the nice thing about that that, that uh, anchorage is we can stop there after six or seven hours drop thing it's, it appears to be a sandy bottom it'd be very nice uh, if it turns out the weather's going to change, we can just go a couple of miles, pop into Strangford and set out the bad weather. If the weather is going to stay with us and be good, then we can come right down, uh, hopefully all the way down to Scaries. It would be about a 10 hour passage, but at least it's not a 14 or 15 hour passage like it was last time. Yeah. So, so many options. It's, as always, it's going to depend on weather. There's a little peculiarity in about this area here in the Irish Sea. The south going tide at low tide stops and becomes a north going tide at low tide. but. This area in the middle is slack. Mm. So that's just where it changes from the tide going one way to the tide going the other way. So the tides below Dublin are opposite to the tides above Dublin. And Which is why Scaries is another good stop because by 
the time you get to Scaries, you're now into the other time. You're just at the end of the slack area. This area near Dun near Dundalk Bay. Yeah. Tends to be the slack area. So, lots to think about, lots to do, lots to look forward to, and lots of planning to do. So, we're going to amuse ourselves by sitting, smelling our brand new charts, and <laughs> <sighs> I feel like a crackhead. Right. <laughs> Okay, well, the weather's been a bit iffy, which is not good, so anybody who's been sailing for any length of time knows that one of the greatest hazards you can do while sailing is to go into a marina, and particularly in gusty, windy conditions, it's not pleasant. Boats move around, things like that happen. But the second biggest hazard you can face is taking gainer to a Chandler's. I mean, we went in to buy this lovely piece of line for our back stay. And then this happened. What is that? It's a new sailing jacket. It's a new what? Sailing jacket. I only bought a coastal one rather than an offshore one. because. Oh, uh, I see. So this was merely a huge amount of money instead of a ginormous amount of money. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with your old one? It's wrecked. So I um, just finished um, working. So... Um, I finished my wee job, which I do um, during the winter, and I thought, do you know what? I deserve a treat. So this is the treat I bought for myself. So my old jacket's going to just get a wash and a, a reproof, and you've got a new shiny one. Yeah, well, go out and get some more work. But... <laughs>